So for the last few years, Cambodia has been touted as the Thailand alternative, the new up and coming single man's paradise. But the question is, is there any substance to these claims or is it all hype? In this video, I compare Thailand and Cambodia in regards to nightlife options, girls, cost of living and other factors relevant for single men. Now, as you know, I spent most of my time in Thailand and I've only been to Cambodia for a few weeks. So my insights in regards to living in Cambodia are somewhat limited. Nonetheless, this is what I have experienced and I would argue that your experience of Cambodia will be similar if you plan on going there for, let's say, two to three weeks for a vacation. Now, let's start out with comparing the women. Thai women versus Cambodian women. Thai women and women of Cambodia can look somewhat similar in regards to their features. I say can because obviously it depends on which region any particular woman is from. Many Thai women you will encounter. For example, if you go to Pattaya and some freelancer girls, they are from regions of Thailand that are close to the Cambodian border. In terms of looks, there's no standard or typical Thai woman. And the same applies to the women of Cambodia. Like I said, they can look somewhat similar. Maybe this generalization in regards to how they dress or their style would be somewhat true. The biggest difference you will notice in regards to their attitude, specifically that Thai women tend to be more or tend to be pretty easygoing and open-minded, whereas women in Cambodia are usually very traditional, very conservative, and also due to social media, online dating and similar things, Thai women are more exposed to Western culture and one could say are more westernized. At least that's my experience. Now, freelancer options, streets, online, clubs. So one thing you'll notice right away when you're arriving in Cambodia, whichever city you're going to, is that your options for meeting freelancers are very, very limited compared to Thailand. If you go to any major city in Thailand, Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket, you are, you're spoiled with options. The Phnom Penh Rela district is rather small and consists mostly of uh, hostess bars, which are the equivalent of the beer bars in Thailand. In Thailand, you can meet freelancers online, outside, or at any of the dozens of big freelancer nightclubs and bars. You can also use my contacts, which has close to 100 girls. In Cambodia, you have a very small street freelancer scene. Your online options are also very limited as well. And in terms of the freelancer clubs, for example, in Phnom Penh, you can go to a club called Ponton Nightclub. I mean, it's it's a nice club, but you can't really compare it to, let's say, uh, Club Insomnia in Pattaya or, for example, High Society in Angel City. It's a good club. It's okay, but it's not as big. And I would say the girls are not as nice looking and there's not as many as you would find in Thai freelancer nightclubs. Now, if you compare this or contrast this with Thailand, where you have so many options that it can even be annoying at times. Let's say late at night you walk around and you get approached so many times. So this is what Thailand would be like. I would say having too many options is always or almost always better than being limited in regards to your choices. If you are in Thailand and you feel like it's too much, you can simply move to or avoid a certain area. If you're in Cambodia and you want more options, there's nothing you can do really except <laughs> take a flight to Thailand. Now, what I've noticed is in most comparison, whether it's a video or on a blog, what's often mentioned is uh, Cambodia is supposedly cheaper. There's fewer tourists. But then I'm asking myself, how is that supposed to be the defining criteria when choosing a holiday destination? So yeah, let's say it's 20%, 30% cheaper, but then you have 90% fewer girls and 90% fewer nightlife options. Is that supposed to be worth it? I would say no. For me personally, the way I see it, Thailand is about the lifestyle, the experience as a whole. Uh, and this is what many who haven't, many people who, have, guys specifically, who haven't been to Thailand don't understand. And it's a concept that is hard to explain because you have to experience it. That's why I've said you go to places such as Thailand for more than just, you know what I mean? I'm not going to say the word because this is YouTube, but you go to Thailand for more than just the three letter word. You go there to change your perspective, to experience a different lifestyle. So oftentimes I don't understand when guys say, oh, but I, you know what? 
I can go uh, across the border to Mexico and I pay $30 and that's much cheaper than Thailand because I don't have to pay for a flight, for a hotel, etc., etc. And like I said, if that's all you want, then you probably shouldn't go to Thailand. But Thailand is that and much more, but it's hard to explain anyway. But back to my original point. If you decide to go to Cambodia, just be aware that it's nothing like Thailand. Your options are very limited. If, for example, you go to Thailand and you're part of my Thailand guide, already you're getting access to close to 100 girls, phone numbers, private contacts, and that's more girls that you will probably encounter during a night out in Phnom Penh, <laughs> Cambodia. So that aspect, clearly Thailand wins in regards to nightlife options, no contest. But what about nightlife? Let's compare the nightlife options. Outside of the red light districts in Bangkok, Pattaya and Phuket, you can actually go to clubs with normal, regular Thai girls and lots of tourists or tourist women from other countries. In Cambodia, in Phnom Penh specifically, that's not really a big thing. Local women are typically very conservative and they're not like the... I don't want to say typical Thai women, but Thai women uh, who are eager to meet foreigners go out in groups with their female friends. I'm not saying this doesn't exist in Cambodia, just not on the same scale as in Thailand. And given the fact that local women in Cambodia are very traditional and conservative, online dating is not nearly as popular as in Thailand. Which brings me to the next point, which is online dating and things such as Tinder in Cambodia. So for more about online dating and Tinder in Thailand and my specific experiences like each girl I've met, etc., you can go to my blog and you find all the info in that reports. But if you've been following my blog or following my YouTube channel, you know that online dating is very, very popular in Thailand. There are thousands of girls on the various online dating sites and platforms. Whereas in Cambodia, you will probably run out of attractive girls to message within a day. So yes, it's true. Again, yeah, you could say you have fewer competitors. There are not as many other guys doing online dating in Cambodia. But there's a reason for this because there are very few girls compared to Thailand on any of these sites. So I would say when it comes to online dating, again, the clear winner for me, Thailand. Next up, hotels and accommodation. Most hotels I've stayed at in Cambodia were guest friendly. They didn't state that anywhere on the website and they even had signs uh, at the hotel saying that... Uh, these kinds of activities are not allowed, they're forbidden, they're illegal. But then when actually bringing girls to my room and seeing dozens of other guys walking in and out with freelancers, nobody said a thing. Nobody asked questions. Nobody asked for the girl's ID, nor was there any other security measure in place. So for example, in this video, in this little short clip, you see the receptionist sleeping behind the counter, which is funny. So this is something I didn't like, specifically that they didn't have uh, any security measures or that they didn't take the idea of the girl. You can argue that if nobody says a thing, yeah, that's less disruptive, maybe to the mood, right? But the girl having to sign in with reception and deposit her ID is actually a good thing. It's for your own safety. Now, if you inquire at such a hotel in Cambodia, if it's guest friendly, I'm guessing you would get an answer such as, Yes, sir, we are guest friendly. We are always very friendly to our guests. <laughs> because Cambodia is a rather conservative country, I feel like it's not really admitted, you know, I'm referring to taking girls to your room, that this is actually happening, so they don't say a thing about it. Whereas in Thailand, it's so in your face that everyone knows what guest friendly means, what join a fee means. And also you have, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of hotels to choose from anywhere you go, any of the major cities. Food options, malls, public transportation. Again, I have to admit, there's no competition. Bangkok, for example, has great public transportation, such as the BTS, the, the SkyTrain, thousands of meter taxis. In fact, there's so many meter taxis everywhere that using a mobile taxi app has is kind of like an overkill. It's redundant. In Cambodia, you're better off ordering via Grab Taxi. It's usually a tuk-tuk. Otherwise, it's, it's very easy being overcharged that the driver doesn't understand where you want to go. So there's no SkyTrain or Underground in Cambodia. The other question you have to ask yourself if you go to a place like Phnom Penh, what are you going to do during the day? I mean, sure, there are nice malls with food courts. 
You can even go and hang out at the fancy casino Naga World and meet girls there. Again, keep in mind, it's mostly freelancers, but there are some regular girls there. You will find at the casino here, um, KTV. The gyms are usually what I would consider, yeah, overpriced. You know, the nice ones you pay at least $10, $12 for day pass. If you're staying for a few days only, I would recommend you simply go to the Naga World Hotel gym, the gym that's inside the hotel and casino complex. You just usually, what I did basically, just told them a random room number. They put it down and that's how you get free access to the gym. Uh, in Bangkok, Pattaya, Phuket. You can choose between different gyms, basic ones and high-end ones. The high-end ones are going to cost you $50 per month, whereas the cheap ones, such as Tony's Fitness, are $20 per month. They also have two-week passes. If you go to Patong, Pat the Phuket Gym Patong is the one that I went to most of the time, which is like 200 baht for a daily pass. Uh, there's a more expensive one as well, the Maximum Fitness, which I think was 400 for a day. But again, it's very, very nice. Uh, so yeah, you have more options in Thailand as well. Groceries and food costs. Now, groceries are not exactly cheap in Thailand. If you go to a convenience store or a supermarket, they don't really have local brands or many local brands on offer. Many of the products are actually imported from Thailand, from the US or from the UK. So simply put, if you buy groceries in Cambodia or anything at the supermarket, really, it's more expensive than in Thailand. Now, previously, I've pointed out that there are not many malls in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. So fewer malls means fewer food courts compared to Thailand. Take Bangkok, for example. If you're near Sukhumvit, you have probably half a dozen food courts within walking distance. So again, the clear winner, for me anyway, will be Thailand. I have tried really, really hard to make this as objective as possible. I mean, I like Thailand, but I want to be objective when I do these comparisons. But it's really hard to find aspects of Cambodia which are superior to Thailand. And I couldn't find any of this. You couldn't find small things. Yeah. But then again, you have to ask yourself, is this really relevant? Is this an actual advantage for for you as a single guy going there. Uh, so it was really difficult to find that. For example, you could say, yeah, there are fewer ladyboys in Cambodia. That's a positive for most guys. But is this really relevant? Is this a reason to go to Cambodia as opposed to Thailand? I would say no. Or you could say, uh, you know, there are fewer tourists overall, and that's a positive. But again, then you have fewer, fewer options in regards to anything pretty much. And then when you think about it, it's actually uh, a negative. So if you factor in those downsides, I, I still don't think it's worth going there for a dedicated vacation. What I mean is visiting Cambodia is fine just to see it or for the purpose of, uh, you know, getting a new Thailand tourist visa. Yeah, sure. Absolutely do that. But going to Cambodia instead of Thailand for your single man vacation, absolutely no way I can recommend this to anyone. Maybe five or 10 years from now, yeah, maybe. But as, as of today, I don't consider Cambodia to be a viable Thailand alternative. I know there are lots of guys that say Cambodia is better than Thailand right now. I simply cannot agree. Maybe they have a different lifestyle. Uh, yeah, so that's my little comparison. You can also find this full article, more pictures, more videos. The whole comparison link is in the description. And I'll see you in the next video.